across the country, real estate boards are saying, buyers are back, sales are up, rates are down, things are fantastic in the Canadian real estate market. Is that actually true? Hey there, and welcome back to Ball Prairie Real Estate. My name is Matthew Fife for Real Estate Agent in Regina, Saskatchewan. That's my trusted assistant, Matilda. This is monthly Canadian real estate market update where we dive deep into the stats. We go behind the headlines and all the press release stuff that the real estate boards put out and get you the real story of what's going on in the Canadian real estate market. We're gonna be going from Victoria to Halifax and all the cities in between, getting you up to speed because what's going on in say Toronto is very different than what's going on in Saskatoon. But before we get started here, we got to start off with another one of my terrible bad dad jokes. What did the duck say when it bought some chapstick? Put it on my bill. If you have a terrible joke that I can use in a future episode, put it in the comments below. Let's get into this one's Canadian real estate market update. The Victoria real estate market has been far more stable than many others in Canada. That being said, this month we saw a 5% month over month increase in sales or typically you see a 7% drop in sales. They also had a massive jump in new listings. Now it's typical to see about a 15% month over month increase in new listings. This past month, they saw a 35% increase. Now without that relatively strong month of sales, we likely would have seen months of inventory officially push past six, meaning it would have been a buyer's market in Victoria. And when it comes to home prices, you can see that there's still a lot of seasonality playing into the market, but home prices now are basically equal to where they bottomed out in 2022 and 2023. I wouldn't be surprised to see this year prices bottom out just slightly below those numbers. What the heck is going on in the Vancouver real estate market? I thought lower interest rates were supposed to bring this big wave of buyers to the market. Have you ever noticed every time there seems to be some hot topic in the news, the deferral cliff, the mortgage renewal wave, the listing surge, the pent up buyer demand, most of it seems to be more hype than reality. The good news is never as good as you expect and the bad news is never as bad as you think it's gonna be. Let's get back to talking about Vancouver real estate again. Home sales are still well below the long-term average in Vancouver, but also still following relatively typical seasonal patterns. This is something that we've been seeing for pretty much the entire year in Vancouver. It's a slower market, but following seasonal patterns. I do think that the new mortgage rules will have a bigger impact on the Vancouver real estate market than in other markets. When you go from a million dollar max insurable mortgage up to $1.5 million, it has a pretty significant impact on the amount a buyer has to have for a down payment. So that I would expect to spur on a little demand, but we're gonna have to wait and see. New listings is an interesting outlier that I'm watching here. Generally, month over month, you're gonna see about a 20% increase in new listings. This past month, we saw a 40% increase in new listing. A lot of sellers were preemptively expecting with rate cuts, there'd be more buyers coming out for the fall market, and that simply just hasn't happened. A lot of sellers have put their houses up for sale, and I'm a bit disappointed with the lack of buyers available. That being said, when I'm talking with agents in Vancouver, they have been telling me that a large number of the new listings in excess inventory is overpriced or doesn't show very well. Good stuff still continues to sell well. And that leads me into my kind of prediction for where the Vancouver real estate market is going to end the year. I still think year over year, you're gonna see home prices within a couple of percent of where they ended last year, probably down one, two or three percent but no major drop off like a lot of people have been anticipating. The Calgary real estate market continues to slow down from the utterly stratospheric heights that it was at, but make no mistake, the Calgary real estate market is still a very hot one and very much a seller's market. It's just coming down from the insane silly pace that it used to be at. When the Calgary real estate market really started to take off, it was single family homes leading the charge. Of course, everybody wanted and they were much more affordable. Now we've seen a shift in the market it started about a year ago Right now, single family homes are still up 9% year over year, but it is apartment style condos seeing the biggest year over year increases at 14%. And a huge part of that is of course, driven by investors coming from Vancouver and Toronto, trying to find affordable rental options that are profitable and they are right now in Calgary. Last month, I was in Calgary for our real estate conference and I spent a lot of time talking with Calgary real estate agents to get to know their market a little bit better. And of course, the starter home segment, that continues to be very, very strong, no surprises there. But agents had said the last month or so, they've seen an uptick in those higher price segments, more buyers looking for those homes, of course, that has been held by some lower interest rates, making those houses more affordable. Overall, the Calgary real estate market continues to see a little bit of a slowdown. We've now got over 5,000 homes for sale in Calgary, which they haven't seen since 2022. It just seems like only a few months ago, we crossed over 4,000 homes for sale in Calgary. So 
more choice for buyers right now and expect that is going to continue. I'm gonna make a bold prediction right now that before 2024 is up, we're gonna see months inventory in Calgary cross into three or more months inventory, meaning we'll be in a balanced market territory. Let me in the comments below. Do you think we're gonna see that in Calgary and which month will it be? The Edmonton real estate market has never really gone as crazy as what's going on in Calgary. That being said though, this past month comparatively was a relatively slow one with sales only being up 29%. And I know that sounds crazy saying sales up 29% is their second worst month of the year. Still been a really busy market. The one thing though that has kept prices in Edmonton from going completely ballistic is that new listings all year long has not only kept up with demand, it's surpassed the five year average, which has kept inventory up enough that there's not quite as much competition amongst buyers. But what I found was really interesting was diving into the stats here, looking by property type, seeing which homes have seen the largest increases. Now, I'm using average price here just because that was what was available. Year over year, apartments are up 10%, townhouses are up 10%, single family homes are up over 12%, and semi-detached is up 17%. But we are at the time of the year in Edmonton where generally activity slows down, so you're gonna see prices cool off a little bit, and buyers, you're likely going to see less competition than you have been for the last couple of months. I think the Regina real estate market is kind of getting to a turning point. Usually we've seen inventory start declining by this time of year, and it's not quite done that yet, but I suspect we will start to see that in next month's stats. The difference though this year is inventory essentially remained unchanged all year long. We started the year in Regina with 620 homes for sale. We're at 654 right now. Normally would have increased to usually double what it starts the year at. My worry when it comes to inventory though is what's going to happen over the winter? It usually declines. The question's now going to be how low is the inventory going to be when we start the spring market in 2025 with interest rates continuing to drop? I hope that is going to free up some inventory as move up buyers which have been stuck in their house unable to move into a new home will finally be able to hopefully do that and that should free up the log jam we've got right now in that first time home buyer segment where there's just simply nothing available to purchase and every first time home buyer is fighting over every single new listing that's any good coming up right now seeing lots of multiple offers Hopefully we'll see alleviation of that in the spring with a little bit more inventory. Last year in the Saskatoon real estate market, there were five months for the entire year where they saw over 400 homes sell in the month. So far this year, there's been six. But what I think is the really scary stat is every single month so far this year, new listings have been below the five-year average and that has kept active inventory at these critically low, historically low levels of inventory. This of course brings up the question as to why home prices are dropping a little bit right now in Saskatoon with how hot the market is. Well, the simple answer is seasonality. Whether over the course of a year home prices increase or decrease, you always see the impact of seasonality. Prices increase in the spring, they usually tend to fall off in the back half of the year. The question is gonna be, do they fall below where they start the year? And I think the answer to that is gonna be very clear. No, Saskatoon will likely end the year with one of the highest year over year price increases. The bigger question going into 2025 is what happens with inventory? If we don't see inventory increase, and I do think we will start to see a little bit of inventory freed up in the spring market, but if that doesn't happen, we're gonna to continue to see Saskatoon be probably Canada's hottest real estate market well into 2025. Winnipeg has quietly continued to be one of Canada's hottest real estate markets. And although the stats make it look like things are slowing down or down a little bit, it's really because 2021 skews the data so badly they were crazy busy that year. Right now, Winnipeg is shaping up. They're probably gonna have third most homes ever sold in a single year. The good news for home buyers in Winnipeg is that new listings have mostly kept up with demand, but never really surpassed it. So inventory still remains relatively low Winnipeg. It just hasn't gotten worse. And when you look at the sales to new listing ratio, it's about 60% right now. That is well above the national average of 53%. So on average, more homes are selling in Winnipeg than the rest of the country. And agents are expecting this trend of a relatively busy market to continue for the balance of the year. And like I said, probably gonna end the year, third most homes ever sold. Prices likely though are gonna fall off a little bit here as the market cools down because of the seasonality, but it's still gonna be probably busier than normal. September generally marks the kickoff of the fall market in Toronto where you see sales jump, new listing jump, active inventory, all jumps. Well, this year, we didn't really see the sales jump just slightly up. New listings up substantially, generally they're up about 20% month to month. 
This year, they were up 34% and active inventory up significantly. There was lots of talk around rate cuts spurring on all this pent up demand. And well, it spurred on a jump in new listings, but not the buyers. A lot of sellers seem to anticipate there would be a jump in buyer activity and it just hasn't happened right now. Although that may change, talking with mortgage brokers, they have seen a large number or large increase in the amount of new mortgage applications. So we'll have to see if that translates into sales or not. I do think though that the new mortgage rules around mortgage insurance, increasing from a million to a million five for what can be insurable, I think that's gonna have a bigger impact in the Toronto real estate market than other markets, you know, smaller ones like mine, for example. We'll have to wait and see how much an impact that has though on the Toronto real estate market. I do see a lot of posts online, it seems entire accounts dedicated to showing these massive losses that sellers are taking, you know, $500,000 here, $800,000 there. I wonder if they'd be so gleeful if it was the other way around and $500,000 price increases. But when you see those, please don't think that you're going to get $500,000 off of the asking price on a house. Right now in Toronto, the average sales to list price is 100%, meaning that the price you see the day you go to write the offer is likely about where it's going to sell it. It might dig off a couple of times before it actually sells, but the day you write the offer, don't expect $500,000 discounts off the asking price right now. Last month, I had mentioned how the pace of price decline seemed to be slowing down in Toronto. And of course, that meant I jinxed it by saying that we saw a fairly substantial month over month price decline this past month in the Toronto real estate market. So I guess my prediction earlier where I said home prices would probably end the year in Toronto down, you know, six, seven, eight, nine percent. Well, that's back on. The auto real estate market is in kind of the middle of what I would say most people would consider an unexpectedly busy back half of the year. Sales since July have been busier than both 2022 and 2023 each and every single month. And those were obviously much slower months in the back half of both of those years. But instead of seeing sales fall off like they have in other cities, we've seen things start to pick back up. Does this mean the auto real estate market is into a full on recovery? Well, we're going to have to wait and see as only time will tell. Ottawa will also likely end this year with the most number of new listings in the better part of a decade, bringing some much needed balance for home buyers and supply that has been desperately needed in the Ottawa real estate market for a very long time now. I've already seen in the comments section, a lot of people ask me what happens when we get an election, which is I'm sure coming sooner rather than later, it seems these days. Well, I can say for sure that during the period of the election, we almost always see a slowdown in real estate activity. People are focused on other priorities. And there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, especially around what happens if the government changes. And obviously that if the polls are to believe would be relatively realistic right now. So if we see a change in government and the government decides to reduce the size of government and those job reductions are in the city of Ottawa, that will obviously have a fairly significant impact on their market. If those things don't happen, maybe the government cuts happen in other markets, they'll have less of an impact on the real estate market. But without a doubt, an election will have an impact on their real estate market. All year long, home sales in Montreal have been well above last year's numbers. And that's not saying much because last year was a relatively quiet year, but they're likely going to end the year with around 40 to 42,000 homes sold in the year, which is actually a fairly decent year. It's not busy compared to the busiest years 2019 through 2021, where they had over 50,000 homes selling in a year, but it's more equivalent to what they saw in 2015, 16, 17, and 18, where they had typically 40 to 40,000 homes selling a year. And agents in Montreal are telling me that they've seen things really continue to pick up. It's something they said for quite a while now, and we continue to see it in the stats. They're saying that buyers have become a lot more focused and a lot more serious in their search. And because there's more inventory now, they're able to find what they're looking for. What I do find really interesting in the Montreal real estate market when I dig through their stats is that over the past decade, it doesn't really matter what's been going on in the market year to year, the number of new listings really doesn't change that much. The fewest number of new listings in a year, about 61,000. While the most number of new listings in a year, about 70,000 or a 13% difference. Whereas if you go look at say Toronto, they had over a 25% difference from the fewest to the most number of listings in a year. When you're looking at the inventory levels, it seems like they're up but that's been skewed because of how low they were in 2019 through 2021. If I go back here and look at 2015, they had almost 30,000 homes this time of year for sale. 2016, about 28,000. 2017, about 25,000. 2018, 
21,000, and then it drops rapidly at one point, bottoming out at 11,000 this time of year. Looking at home prices in Montreal, you can see since 2022, where prices bottom out, they've continued to trend up. Obviously, you've got the seasonality in there, and they've been hovering around $540,000 now for the past couple of months. For a number of years, Califax was one of, if not the hottest real estate market in Canada. For the last three months, we've seen sales above 2023, above 2022, and in some cases above 2021 levels. And if that continues, we could be talking about Halifax back in that conversation of Canada's hottest real estate market sooner rather than later. When I talked with agents in Halifax, asking them kind of what's going on, what are they seeing in the market? The first thing they said is it's really started to heat back up. It's noticeable on the ground. They're getting far more calls. When it comes to what's seeing the most sales, sub $500,000, especially with houses that have basement suites that has become incredibly popular with new Canadians, which they're saying makes up about 50% of the buyers they're seeing right now. On the flip side, what is cooling off or not selling as well, above $650,000, especially in the periphery areas around Halifax, while the core continues to remain a fair bit stronger. When looking at active inventory, they still have over a thousand houses for sale in Halifax, but this is the time of year where generally that number starts to drop off quite rapidly. So we're gonna have to wait and see if that happens. We combine that with potentially more sales and we could see Halifax, that real estate market, starting to tighten back up. Now, the home prices have been averaging around $580,000 to $600,000 essentially all year long, making it basically unchanged all year long. And unlike most other cities in Canada, Halifax has actually seen home prices increasing since 2022, not decreasing. That wraps up this month's Canadian real estate market update. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. This is my most recent weekly news recap. Leave me a comment below so we can chat in the comment section below. And as always, thanks very much for watching.